You're listening to the Sketchnote Army Podcast. I'm your host, Mike Rohde, the author of the Sketchnote Handbook and the Sketchnote Workbook. And this is the podcast where I chat with sketchnoters and visual thinkers and try to understand what makes them tick. This season of the Sketchnote Army Podcast is presented to you by the Sketchnote Handbook's 10th birthday. And we're giving you the gifts. Save 50% when you buy any two of the Sketchnote Handbook, the Sketchnote Workbook, or the Sketchnote Handbook video together as a set. Offer applies to both the print and ebook editions of the books. Use discount code HAPPY10 at checkout to apply savings. That's HAPPY10. This set of books makes a great gift for new sketchnoters or the perfect way to replace your lent out copies of the books that haven't been returned. And if you own a physical copy of the Sketchnote Handbook and would love to have a digital copy, you can get the ebook and the video for your iPad. For details on this offer, visit roadesign.com slash happy10. That's roadesign.com slash happy10. Offer ends December 31st, 2022, so buy yours today. And now, on with the show. Hey, welcome to All the Tips for Season 12. In this episode, this special episode, we have all nine of our guests sharing tips compressed into one handy episode so you can listen through and be inspired as we come to the end of 2022. So I hope you really enjoy this podcast episode, that you listen to it again and again and and get yourself inspired for the new year. Uh, And thank you to each one of the guests for season 12. And we look forward to sharing with you season 13 in 2023. I'm excited for it, and I can't wait to share all the guests that I'm starting to line up now. So have a happy holiday and a happy new year. Talk to you again in 2023. Herman Lucha Berenbrook. Uh, For for people who are starting, I would say, um, because I still come across many people who who, who, I, I consider their drawings as really great, but they feel insecure. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, um, and I feel it's such a pity because you know if, if your people are not so insecure about their handwriting, for example, right. and I think uh, they should shouldn't see drawing that much as something to create beauty, but more like purely as a communication tool and a trust on the. My, my tip would be like trust the human power of the the, the power of the human brain. And, uh, mm. you know, our brains will understand whatever you're trying to communicate in your drawings and, and just have confidence in that, in that. So that would be a, a tip for people who are just starting it or who feel uh, not uh, always so confident. The other tip, uh, this is especially when you're drawing a lot on, on, on paper, it's to em- embrace your mistakes. I enjoy drawing on paper is because, you know, when you make a mistake, uh, you, you cannot undo it. You have to, you know, either <laughs> try to hide it or... But often uh, I notice that uh, creating these mistakes make me... And, and then having to hide them. They, they create situations, uh, they add serendipity into my work and, and I have to be creative around it. And sometimes it, it, out of mistakes come uh, new ideas. So, um, yeah, I, I, I think that's, uh, that, that's another tip. I think just embrace your mistakes and see if you can uh, uh, learn from them and and, and maybe uh, integrate them also into your solutions. Um, Then uh, the other one, if if, if you're um, using visual thinking and if if you're getting more comfortable in in doing it, uh, I would really not advise because it sounds so, it's up to people themselves of course, but uh, I I like to use the drawing conversations to understand uh, mm. the other person and I think uh, exploring that as a tool like how can you use drawing and visual thinking not for your personal note-taking but to help the, the to deepen a conversation and to better understand mm. each other I think that's a, a very beautiful addition to uh, yeah mm. the ability of, of drawing it's almost like yeah. listening to some what someone's saying and drawing it out and they see it forming on the page and then you say well here's what I be- here's what I believe or here's what I think yeah. and you draw your thing and you see how do these things relate what are you know these maybe there's different perspectives and it's all right on the page so you both can see it together. yes exactly 
Exactly, and and I think it's also um, like I, I was in a, I was giving a visual thinking training, and I always you know explain the basic elements of how you can easily draw mm-hmm. what what are the basic shapes, and then I ask people like, okay, give me an object, and I will draw it for you using these shapes. Um, and uh, very often people shout, start shouting animals, and animals is something I'm not very good at drawing, uh, but. Uh, <laughs> So somebody said like, oh, draw a cow. And I was like, shit, the cow seems so basic, but how actually should I be? I'm, I'm drawing often <laughs> in the business world, you know, we draw compliance yeah. or <laughs> but a cow. Yeah. Uh, so it, I felt a little bit like I'm giving this training and drawing and I had to figure out on the spot, like how should I be drawing a cow? So, yeah. Uh, and then I, I noticed that I started asking questions like, okay, so I, I started telling them like okay you have to help me what is the shape of a cow and uh, and and then I realized this is exactly how it's meant to be you know it's it's, mm. uh, it's about having this conversation they were shouting like a cow has you know uh, they started, started shouting all the elements of what they considered yeah. a cow so I, th- I think with kind of embracing also that sometimes you don't know something that can be a really powerful element also to, to use uh, mm-hmm. while you're visualizing complex or cows, complex information or cows. Yeah, I mean, in that in that instance that you cited, you you went from demonstrating your prowess at drawing cows, which you didn't have, and you switched into let's collaborate and draw a cow together. What does a cow have? Oh, it has horns. It has an udder. The body is kind of square. It has four legs. You know, whatever. It has spots. Right, and then now you're sort of engaging the audience in this process, and they can see like, okay, you you can do this, and look how Herman is drawing with this, these basic shapes, like you said. They're taking my words, and my words are being turned into images. So maybe I can do this, right? You're you're sort of inviting them to step in, and they don't exactly. even know it, right? They just think they're participating, which is pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, and and uh, the, the nice thing is that they also realize that uh, how. I- on that moment, how powerful this uh, the visual tool is. Mm-hmm. Wow, that it's really that's about really co-creation cool. and, uh, and, and, mm-hmm. and also getting alignment in this case of what, what a cow looks like. But uh, yeah. then ju- during the workshop when we explored other elements, I think every time when you start drawing something, you just get deeper into the meaning of something. And mm-hmm. uh, also opening up uh, discussions about how people think different about specific words or specific situations or whatever you're trying to visualize. Tanvi Agarwal. Yes. Okay. So I think um, like a lot of people um, are have that mindset that, okay, if we practice enough of drawing, we'll build a style. If we practice enough of like executing anything, it will work out for us. Uh, but I say that instead of practicing like just execution part, uh, we should focus more on the thinking part. Like mm. I, I'm a big, big uh, believer in like the thinking part of drawing, which has not gotten enough emphasis. It does not mm-hmm. get enough emphasis, I believe. Um, so even if you have like a drawing course by someone, I think after a period you will see that you are starting to draw like them. But you don't want to do that. You want to draw like something that feels like you made it at the yeah, end of the day. Yeah. Um, so I think instead of focusing on your skill development with the drawing, um, I think what is more important is how you think about it and how you execute it, not just what you think about it. Like we've been we've been told that ideas are everything, but I think the way you execute your idea is everything. Uh, so even if like you have a better way to represent the silliest and the smallest ideas, I think people will like that better mm-hmm. than someone who has you know drawn that in a very pretty elaborate way. Um, so I think focus on your ideas and to do that, uh, consume a lot of good content. Um, and also like here, like a lot of people think that copying means you're like literally doing that copy paste where you're actually you know just exactly copying how someone draws their eyes and the hair and the hands and everything Uh, but I think instead of like just copy pasting you just like observe something and try to recreate it by memory you will learn a lot more about how they got to that point and even if you don't really decode how they did it you will find a way of how you can do it and in that process you will not make something exactly the way they did but you will like you that is how you'll develop your own style i believe 
um so like uh, i think going by the steel like the artist book um i mean uh, like like do that like observe something and draw from that instead of like just copy pasting to you know put something on instagram because you are on a time or, or a calendar that okay yeah. one thing has to go out every day um like even though i'm running a business and like a lot of my gigs come from my social media platforms i have not been focusing on them as much um and i only put out something when i like really have like one idea that i want to put out so i design it and i put it out so my frequency is very bad sometimes it's like once in a month but work is fine so um i mean instagram is not like the end of the world so i i would really really want to tell this to all the artists out there that instagram is not your business spending time on instagram is not spending time on your business mm. actually go consume read read a lot because your mind shifts will shape your style um so i think that is like one big 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 tip and advice a suggestion whatever you call it but please execute it um i think next um would be like a lot of people put a lot of emphasis on uh, getting a beautiful work because like that is the standard that we have said that okay artwork has to be pretty uh, but again uh, your work does not have to be as pretty this is an exercise that i do in all of my doodle workshops where i ask people that okay how many of you believe you can draw or you can't draw so when I, when whenever i ask you can't draw a lot of people raise their hands that okay we can't draw and then we do a game of pictionary where i just ask them to like you know draw one thing about them and everyone else in the group is going to guess and most people guess what the other person is drawn and i think that is the purpose of like making an art especially a doodle or a sketch note that it does not have to be pretty but people can make meaning out of it um, right so i mean just like draw something that anyone can make some meaning out of and like that should be the standard um so don't put like beautiful drawings as a standard like my work is pretty only because my clients pay me for pretty work um <laughs> had that not been my con- constraint uh, maybe my work would not be like pretty um so like that is that is the case with a lot of other professional artists that their work is pretty because that is what they are getting paid for right. but when you look at like our personal notes it's not pretty it's it's actually like not pretty at all uh so like the focus should not be pretty work and uh, i think the third is of course like please if you are trying to build a brand or actually make money or have a stable creative career uh invest in yourself especially in india a lot of people don't really believe in like they they will pay a lot of money to schools and colleges for degrees but not to like people who are actually giving good content that can take you somewhere in a smaller time so recently i invested in tiago forte is building a second brain course it was a big investment mm-hmm. uh, but i think even like in in a month's time i can see the results and that has left led to so many good mind shifts uh, exposure to a great community mm-hmm. uh, like i i have deep respect for like my work after that course than i had before it mm-hmm. uh, so i mean invest in courses more than you know you would like to invest in a degree uh because your courses all these courses that you know creators are putting out will actually take you places that you've not imagined and it will make you stand out of the crowd like that is if that is what you're trying to you know achieve so i think invest in yourself build websites like invest in your tech and infrastructure do all of this for yourself um and i think like that is that is the one best thing that uh, creative people can do or anyone who is passionate about anything can do That's interesting that you the last tip and these are all great tips the third one. I think a lot of times people go to school for the paper at the end but they're not invested in learning and how it changes them during the experience where what you're saying is invest in something that's applicable that you can immediately start to apply and then see an impact, right? And not so much on the paper, it's more like the paper is what is happening to you and how you've changed, right? That's really great. Jude Pullen So I guess maybe one of them was sort of borrowing from my friend Tim King who does the reportage illustration mm-hmm. that I think sometimes that that mashup of making your brain engage with something in the environment and then using that as your medium mm-hmm. I I think that's something I don't see done a lot by designers or graphic artists very often and certainly 
product designers, I, I can't even think of anyone who I've seen do that on a regular basis. And feel free for people to email me and, and tell me I'm wrong because I would love to see that. But I, I sort of think this notion of sort of being precious about the things in front of you, that it really helps sort of like loosen you up. Mm. So the more likely you are to just get a Sharpie and draw over a product or mm -hmm. embellish it in some way, I think I think will take you to exciting places. So I know that's mm. a bit of a a bit of a quirky tip that I wouldn't say I'm sure most people won't do it on a daily basis, but I think it's it's always surprised me when I look at things afresh in the way I engage them. Not just always saying, I'm doing a sketch, so it's gotta be on paper and I'm mm -hmm. looking at the thing and I'm sketching. I think breaking that, as it were, wall and just sketching direct onto something mm -hmm. um, that is related to what you're doing, I think that's mm. that's a pretty exciting one. I guess one of the the tips I sort of wrote down just, just casually as you asked me at the beginning was uh, draw for mum. And I know that's a little bit gendered and it's not meant to be sort of uh, patronizing, but I think it's... For me, that is true because my, my dad is, as I said, ex-builder. He's quite comfortable with cutaway drawings and stuff like this. But I, mm -hmm. I think it's more draw for someone who you know isn't in your world mm. of, of thinking and setup and appropriation of tools or, or things like this. So, so having someone in mind who you think, I have to really explain it on their terms with no prior mm -hmm. knowledge, I think challenging yourself to do that regularly um, is a it's just a really good way to sort of build empathy as well so I'd say those 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 two were sort of uh, should we say intellectually and creatively serious I guess I, I thought I'd just end with a slightly flippant one um, because it's a it's a good story and it usually gets a chuckle from uh, people I've mentioned it I, I, I probably will get you know, it's it's. I should probably just sort of make it sound like it's a, it's apocryphal. But um, when I was at Dyson, uh, I, and and I should say I've never had James D Sir James Dyson confirm or disconfirm this, but I was told maybe as a wind up, I don't know, by one of the engineers that said, so when you're sitting opposite, it's a good idea if you learn to sketch upside down, mm. because it's annoying if you keep having to draw from your perspective, because. Sir James doesn't particularly appreciate then having to spin your paper around and then backwards, forwards, backwards, forwards, backwards, forwards. So, as I said, I, I'm being, I'm trying to be like fair to James Dyson to say I never got confirmation that he did or didn't like that. <laughs> but I, I, it was one of those things where, as I said, even if even if I was to give that advice to a junior, I've sort of actually gone like, you know what? Don't worry about the person or the setup. It's actually a really good skill to learn mm -hmm. because a it, it it forces you to be able to flip something in your head and genuinely when you're in a, a meeting and I've, I've i've been in some meetings with people where you're just like you feel like a total imposter it's such a cool icebreaker just to be able yeah. to do that and people are like wait and you can see it in their face where they're like oh my god he's just drawn it from my perspective and and it's kind of quite you know it just instantly disarms people because it's almost like a it's almost like such a generous thing to do for someone who you don't yeah. know to just be like i'm instantly putting myself at your disposal mm. even down to the fact i will draw upside down for you mm. at, at speed mm. um so i think i think that for me irrespective of whether people think it's a little bit like oh you know James Dyson this, James Dyson that. I think don't don't get you know don't don't let the uh, the truth get in the way of a good story, as they yeah. say. <laughs> so. That's good. A good principle, right? Yeah. Yeah. I just I just think for me, I've never. It's it's almost like a good magic trick. You like sometimes I don't want to know the truth because the what what that little thing that that person told me, uh, whether it was a joke or not, I think it really set me on a good course for sort of empathy mm. and and just being willing to go the extra mile in a meeting. Mm -hmm. um, so I think irrespective of its validity, it's uh, <laughs> the truth of that. Uh, I just think it's a great, a great thing to try and deploy. Um, mm. That's a great, that's a great suggestion. You're just turning it in their direction. I think you're right. It sort of helps you think of it in more dimensions than just your own, right? So you're, yeah. maybe you'll see something by actually drawing it in their perspective that you wouldn't have seen had you drawn in yours. 
Mm, um, mm. I had a friend. I have a friend, James Carlson. His his big thing was always learn how to draw while you're speaking. So speaking and drawing at the same time. He was really good at it. So he could be yeah. drawing and explaining himself and continue drawing. I've not I've not achieved his level of success, but I've. So if you could imagine like mixing those two. So if you could draw upside down, so mm. that you're you're drawing for the other person and you're able to talk at the same time so you're sort of explaining what you're doing as you're doing it that could be a really fun experience for the receiver you know i hadn't i hadn't actually realized that that yeah basically within that was the ability it was just assumed that you could talk through it as well yeah i yeah. think maybe this is a useful tip for you but again the person was kind enough to point out to me that it's like they were like if you can't do it straight off the bat that's why you need to practice it Mm -hmm. So we, we would always go into meetings knowing that we wanted to present the whatever. And so I would be there, you know, sort of 10 minutes before going, okay, so I'm going to say this, mm -hmm. I'm going to do that, mm -hmm. I'm going to say this. And and so I would say the only, the only, it's a little bit fake it till you can make it, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, you have to practice. Usually with clients, you're not, they're not sitting there going, draw a banana in a Ferrari, <laughs> you know, and you're like, oh, panic. Uh, you know, it, it, it's you know you're going to do a sketch of the thing that yeah. you've been working on for the past six months. So I'm saying, weirdly, it's 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 more just a little bit of a dress rehearsal, and then mm -hmm. you get to look super impressive. Mm -hmm. I suppose if you have kids like we have, like uh, the way to to test yourself is to show it to your kids, right? Explain something yeah. to them, and then use this upside down drawing trick, and see how they react to it and then maybe that's the way you present ideas to them so that's this is your practice right you could run it past them on low stakes you know your kids will laugh yeah. at you and you can see before you go and before sir james right and, and make a <laughs> fool of yourself or something <laughs> but, but yeah story. weirdly i think it's also like that that thing of your kids as i said uh, are really not particularly critical um yeah but I think I think the thing I've noticed is that even when you get it wrong, people are still just amazed that it's even eighty percent right. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, they they it's it's such a party trick that you sort yeah. of actually sometimes you just forget that you're even doing the trick. You mm -hmm. know, so um, yeah, I would say that weirdly the the only other thing to mention is uh, I'm I'm dyslexic myself, and I know that mm -hmm. there is usually a bit of an ability to flip things because you're doing that anyway Naturally, with words yeah. mm -hmm. so um yeah i'd say if anyone listening or watching this is is dyslexic then probably you'll find it's not actually that difficult to pick it up mm -hmm. um so it's a fringe benefit to <laughs> the, the otherwise <laughs> the problem <laughs> <laughs> superpower hidden superpower yeah. well that's really great you're challenging me challenging me to practice this now jude so thank you for encouraging me with the last tip especially, but I love the others as well. Natalia Talkowska. Super spontaneous. So probably depending on how much time you would give me, I would maybe put other things into, into place. But sure. uh, number one thing that comes to me is always talk to other people, hmm. even if they're not from your line of work or artistry or space, share with them how you feel, what you do, open yourself up. I would say that, at least for myself, gave me a lot of constantly learning from other people, whether that's in business, mm. people in my uh, line of work, uh, other creatives who do completely different stuff. So like poetry, photography, pottery, I don't care. Just sharing how you are, where you are with other people mm. suddenly can get you to a different space because sometimes we are so bogged down with like our own world because we speak to ourselves Right. You know, and we do this ourselves nonstop. So just, it's very refreshing to see someone's comment and they could just be like, oh, so that's what you mean. Oh, how about this? And you're like, wow, this opened my mind. So I would definitely say share and talk to other people. It's, it's refreshing and it's uh, good for the good for the brain and for the ideas. Mm -hmm. um, what else? I would say try to do something completely else. Maybe the plateau comes from the fact that you're doing constantly the same stuff mm. and you feel a bit stuck in your old ways. So try to do something else, meaning is there a course you can take around what you do? Is there a completely new type of uh, writing or drawing you can start developing? Can you work more on how people look like in your stories? Can you work on your uh, type? Can you just try something, use different colors or different shapes in the way you work? Can you scrape half of the details and challenge yourself that it needs to be very clean and very, very focused? So 
whenever I kind of challenge myself to do something else, I freak out of it because I'm like out of my comfort zone, but right. it levels me up, mm-hmm. I guess. And what else? And I mean, again, maybe maybe it's a cliche, but I truly believe in the whole like, you need to tell yourself that this is what you do, who you are. And as you said, Mike, before, me drawing even 11 years ago in that room was already impressive to those people because right. it was a skill they don't know. So they're right. like, wow. So for me, it's like, believe that this is who you are and what you do. And the, and you, it's it's a bit of an exercise. You just need to tell yourself. It sounds a bit mm-hmm. weird, but how many times I was like, I'm Natalia, I do this and hell, I bring value. You know, like, otherwise I found myself so many times feeling like an imposter and like hiding or like, especially if I got any comments around, oh, this doesn't give anything, it's just pretty. Or, you know, whatever, then or it's nice to have. I was like, hell is not, not just nice to have and there's so much impact I've seen it does, but it's my job to be that and believe mm-hmm. that and no, I'm not going to work with everyone. Exactly. I can't convince everyone. It's totally, it's okay it's, if it's not for you or it's okay if you feel like some people don't connect with it. It's totally fine. But believe that this is who you are. I've got this awesome skill. I've, I bring something to this world. My brain thinks in pictures. How cool is that? Mm-hmm. And now share that with other humans, you know, and see what they say. Um, but yeah, I don't know if this was useful. I, this I could great. go on, but... Yeah, these are my first few, few thoughts. David Neal. So this is what I love to be able to do now because I've I've been on this journey for a few years and I've I've looked back and I've seen how my skills have evolved and gotten mm-hmm. better over time. Um, I've got a, a story that I, I love to include in some of my talks that it that's um, how you know I get started with with drawing. I, I've drawn some slides. The, the, the illustrations are, are terrible. Um, and then maybe a year later or two years later, I'm, I'm giving the same talk and I'm thinking, you know what? I can probably do a little, you know, a little bit better job with these illustrations than I did when I originally created them. I'm going to try recreating one of these. Mm. So I have, I have this, this side by side comparison of the ShamWow meme guy you know he's like yeah. h- holding the the thing you know like hey 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 look here <laughs> and so i have the original drawing of that and then i have the the one that i created um recreated and when you put those side by side i'm i was blown away i was like i can't believe how far i've come wow and so the, the, the story that I wanted, or the things that I want to say to people to encourage them is, one, it's, it's a long game. And it's, your skills are going to improve if you do these things. And the things that you need to do are, one, you need to practice. Practice may seem boring and, and, and tedious at times, but find some way to make it a regular thing for me twitter and social media were were, like i said an accountability partner i use them to motivate me to to create more things but i've also you know found ways of like motivating myself like i'm gonna i'm gonna commit to creating a inspirational quote Uh, i'm gonna illustrate a quote uh every day for the month of August, you know, so day one, I find a quote and I illustrate it. By the end of that month, your approach to how you do those drawings, how you illustrate your your lettering, how everything about it is going to evolve. And you will look back over the last 30 days and go, wow, I, I would not have expected just spending 10, 15 minutes a day uh, doing this. I would have improved this much, but you will find yourself improving. So number one is practice. Number two is determination, you know, keeping keeping at it and not giving up. And three is forgiveness. Mm. You need to be able to forgive yourself. Um, like you're not going to be able to do everything 
the first time or the fir- you know the first time you try something new you're not going to do be that great at it you know you've got to give yourself uh, some fr- some room for error for you know to be patient with yourself be forgiving of yourself to and say okay that was that was the first attempt let's try it again and keep doing it i have used in my personal journey my engineering and analytic skills <laughs> to as an approach to drawing mm. and what i have done sometimes without even thinking about it is i i'm using my engineering side of my brain to say okay i really admire this person's work you know they're doing something that i wish i could do or wish i could emulate or wish i could do something similar to mm-hmm. i don't have the same skills or the same creativity that they have but how can i reverse engineer what they've done yeah. how can i how can i decompose based on my current skill set my knowledge you know what what things i know about illustration today how could i attempt to recreate what they have done mm-hmm. and so i've used you know little projects like that where i've 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 looked at someone else's work and say okay i know how i work and if i was going to recreate this this is this is how i would do it i would use you know these kinds of layers or these you know these kinds of brushes or these kind of types of layers you know if they're like using multiply or uh you know, different modes of, of things, you know, based on the skills that I have at the time, how would I reproduce that? And that has led to some discoveries of like, mm-hmm. I don't know yet how to do that kind of thing. And okay, I'll come up with my own way. So I am, I'm completely self-taught. I don't, I've never taken a, a course outside of, you know, like reading your book and, yeah. and a few other folks on, on how to do sketch notes. Uh, I've never taken any formal art classes or anything, so I've I've probably done it the, the hard way. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I've figured out things like uh, shading and and uh, color theory and and things that that probably I should have taken some classes or watched some videos on, but um, uh, it's you know it's all part of the the journey. This episode of the Sketchnote Army podcast is brought to you by Concepts, an infinite, flexible, creative tool for all your good ideas, available on iOS, Windows, and Android. The new Concept 6 for iOS has exciting new features, including a modernized Canvas interface, a freshly structured, easier-to-use gallery that integrates with the iOS Files app, and RGB and HSL color options added to its already extensive Copic color palettes. Concept's infinite canvas lets you spread out and sketch in any direction. Draw and take notes with liquid pens, markers, and brushes in your favorite colors. Everything you draw in Concepts is a flexible vector, so you can move your notes around the canvas or change their color, tool, or size with simple gestures. Drag and drop images onto the canvas and use layers and grids to organize your creative space. When you're ready to share, Export straight to your friends or team. Search Concepts in your favorite app store for infinite, flexible sketching. Kate Rudder. If you have time, so if you can take some time, which I think any renewal deserves time. Like, that's the philosophy. But I had an experiment experience once that became an intentional experiment, which is the pen goes dry experiment. I was outside and I was doing some sketching and I lost the lid of my pen. And it was it was a good pen. I didn't want to make you know I didn't want to lose it and have it just dry out. So I just told myself I would keep drawing and writing and noting and observing and thinking until the pen went dry. And I did. And it took you know a couple of hours, but it's fascinating like what happens when when your goal is to run the pen dry instead mm-hmm. of to produce some kind of outcome. Mm-hmm. And you know I ended up watching a few videos and like drawing things around the house and taking a walk and you know drawing flowers and and it was all very random, but it was incredibly freeing. And mm-hmm. so you might not necessarily want to run a pen dry that can take hours, but you might say for the next 20 minutes I'm just going to walk around with my pen and pe- paper and just note, draw, sketch, just visually translate the world. 
And there is a connection and an embodiment of action with that, I think, is really rejuvenating. And you'll never be sad you did it. Like, right? Like, you might look at the outcome and be like, whoa, that's crazy. You will never regret doing that because it's this moment in your life of rejuvenation. It can be, I think, mind-altering. All right, so that was a long one. Let's do a short one. I love three times a charm, which is mm. taking a sketch note that I've done in the past, looking at a different layout pattern or format or someone else's style, and doing it two more times, mm. trying to make it as different as possible. And to me, that really opens up and refreshes the capture. I fall into tra- you know both patterns as well as ruts, and, uh, and it takes a lot of responsibility off to be doing the content that you know that you've done before Mm -hmm. and then doing it in a different visual way it also reinforces that content i think that's one Mm -hmm. of the best study techniques ever yeah yeah and i'd say the third one is to find someone that you enjoy that you don't feel judged by and just ask about their work and tell them about yours Mm -hmm. like get out of doing the work and talk about the work and reconnect with why you love it. Why? It was fun. What was hard? That reflection moment, I think we don't take the time for as much in our everyday lives. Um, I know that for many years for a sketch note, like I wanted to get it done and I was doing a lot of live note taking. So speed was actually yeah. part of my livelihood, right? Mm-hmm. I was in a conference setting taking notes on behalf of an audience and there was a huge amount of excitement and responsibility with that. But um, so being able to just reflect and talk through a practice I think is, is something that evens out that tempo mm. I think that reminds me that that was our meeting basically at South by Southwest as we both came and we shared and we like here's what I'm doing oh what are you doing oh check this out right and we were sharing and listening to what we did and getting ideas from each other and that was a really memorable moment I mean I still remember it however long I think it was 09 2010 something like that 12 years ago 13 years ago so that's a really great, those are three great tips in that one. The last one I like uh, uh, quite a bit, like finding opportunities to connect. And you can even do that um, over Zoom or FaceTime or whatever technology. It doesn't have to be in person. You can still do those things for people that are not close to you, which helps you build a network of friends uh, that, that you can rely on. So that's really good advice. Tim May. So I think that there are there are a few things that I think are, are valuable. One of the first ones is um, be fearless in your pursuit of drawings to help understand. Mm. So, so what, what I mean by that is um, I kind of mentioned at the top of our, our discussion, if you have a, um, if you have an idea, don't worry about the quality of the drawing of your idea before you share it with people. Mm-hmm take that sort of raw sketchy version of your idea and and bring that forward as the thing that you share because what what will inevitably happen is people will see that it's sketchy and they'll know that it's like oh this is not finished i can mm-hmm. i can mess this up and it's not that there's no threat to me here yeah, yeah, yeah so so i think that there's sort of like the first tip is like believe in the value of of incomplete or sketchy work um, as as a tool for for collaboration I think that that's um, that, that, that that's that's a, a great way to move forward Love it. Um, and and that, that as you and, and share that with people and ask people for feedback um, that, that, that that's that's another kind of thing to keep in mind as you move it forward um, the next thing that, that, that I think about is as I, I think about working this way um, there's you know, as, as, as you're dealing with capturing images and trying to kind of um, quickly visualize things, um, don't put pressure on yourself to make them beautiful. Uh, that there's there's always, it's always better to kind of um, think simply and, and give a simple version of the thing you're trying to draw as opposed to, you know, getting all the filaments in your light bulb right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there, and and the, 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 that there's... Um, that, that abbreviating your work, a, a lot of times that, that when we're doing um, graphic recording at Explain, we're, we're really trying to do it in, in real time and trying to, to, you know, instead of make it look totally perfect to, to be anatomically correct, mm-hmm. we're trying to get the gesture right. And so we'll often use that kind of Egyptian perspective where the head is in profile and the arms are, yeah. you know, the shoulders are forward and the, 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 that, that sort of like, um, so it's okay to abbreviate um, as you're as you're working on your your ideas uh, and and sort of keep simplicity in mind uh, and and that 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 still can have 
just as dramatic an effect as a a lushly illustrated piece. Like I think that there there's definitely a time to kind of go deep and and get all the details right. Um, but oftentimes in 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 this the, the kind of sketch noting world, you're you're t- you're trying to get it quick. You're trying to get you know you, you want to summarize their ideas and turn them around very quickly. Um, so I'm trying to think of what's the best third piece of wisdom. Um, as I'm thinking about that, can we have a moment of silence for the Choco Taco? Um, <laughs> yes, I saw that. That's going away. It's why it's go. I, I, you know, I, I was never really. I, I don't think I've had a Choco Taco in at least 20 years. Um, but the fact that they're gone makes me miss them. <laughs> it's like, that I, I think you know. I've, I've spent some time in Europe, and I, I I feel like you know when I'm in Europe, and I I haven't had something like a corn dog for uh, you know six months. It's like all of a sudden a corn dog sounds really appealing. Now I don't go for corn dogs necessarily. Like that's right. not my jam. But 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 the idea that I can't have one all of a sudden means oh I got to get one. Um, it's funny how that works. Um, so so yeah I, I I would say the the last thing and kind of bumping up uh, skill sets and work is one of the things that's helped me is just going out and find a class in a thing you're not good at to help yourself get better because there's so many good classes out there mm-hmm. um and and i think that, that that we often um you know hey we're designers we can design our way out of anything we can figure out a solution to this problem and there's somebody else who's done it better than you probably teaching a class in it right now um and and the the number of offerings that are out there i, I just feel like um it's it's important to know that that you don't know what you don't know. <laughs> and, and so go find one of these people um, like Mike, who's offering a course in this that's going to help you move move up in, in that area, right? That, that there's, you, you can always get better. And, and that mm-hmm. the, one of the things that often happens in these courses that's really almost as valuable as the instruction that you get from the instructor is the forums that they set up. So in a recent course um, that, that I took, there was a Facebook community that was set up and it was a really big community. There were a lot of people in that course. And I quickly found that that um, the more I participated in that community, I was getting really good personal advice mm. from some of these people who are very well established uh, in, in this in this sort of direction I wanted to go. Mm. And, uh, and, and that was sort of, um, you know, what once again, like, um, People are going to be generous if you can connect with them, but sometimes you need to find the right forum to do it. Yeah. So, so I think that as as you're continuing to learn, um, you know, do a lot of practice, keep your sketchbook, do all those things that are, that are sort of going to be natural, right? That that you know, there there have probably been 20 people before uh, on your podcast who have said, while you're in a meeting next time, bring your sketchbook, draw along to the ideas that you're hearing, right? Yeah. That, that, that's that's a very good first step. But I think that that, that another step of just like take one of these courses that's available to you and 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 use that as a, as a way to start to write, really build your skills and build your personal community right so the other thing is that you you meet people who will continue to respond to to your uh, you know connection request and and they'll be able to help you as you move throughout your career Raven Henderson one thing I would say is to do some type of challenge like inktober mm-hmm. if you commit to that and commit to having to produce something that you ne- don't necessarily have to think about each time like you don't have to sit at a blank page and say what do I do now yeah you've already got the prompts in front of you mm-hmm. um, so I love that and actually trying to build one with have you talked to Constance Wilson I know Constance but I haven't talked to her for a little while okay so her and I are working on a project and um, hopefully we'll have it further along if you talk to her so she can go mm-hmm. really in depth with that but we both love those types of prompts mm-hmm. that okay. get you going and get you moving another thing I would say is to just go smaller especially mm-hmm. for someone like me that likes to fill a page yeah so sometimes I just go to sticky notes mm. and when I'm reading a book I keep you know sticky notes you can pull off like a like 20 at a time and I stick them in the inside cover of whatever mm. book I'm reading or the back cover. And then when something piques my interest, I can just go to the back cover real quick, pull out one sticky note, and I will try to draw an icon to go with whatever quote that I want. Mm. Um, and that's another thing that kind of helps me just focus on a bite-sized piece at a time. Mm-hmm. That's a great idea. I hadn't thought about that. I know sticky notes can get pretty thin. If you just take a chunk of 10 or maybe 20, 
could sneak them in your books. Yeah. That's a great idea. And then it, I like the constraint idea too that you, because it's so small, you feel like, well, I could fill a sticky note, right? And it's not, it doesn't feel overwhelming, which is great to get started. Yeah. That's great. I love that. Hmm. And I love listening to how other artists are doing what they're doing. Hmm. Uh, I, I forgot to mention this. I'm, uh, I'll be teaching a class at Design Revival. Mm. In August, Design Revival is kind of an offshoot of Creative South, which is the conference that happens yep. here in Columbus, Georgia. Mm -hmm. So now we have Design Revival that's all about using visuals to communicate the gospel without getting in the way of the gospel. Mm. Got it. And so they bring in different speakers. And I love hearing from them because it's talking about communication through visuals. Mm -hmm. And especially not getting in the way of the message that you're trying to. Right. So maybe maybe the recommendation there for someone who's listening is, um, well, you can look up Design, Re Design Revival stuff online if there is some, but uh, you know, just getting inspiration from, well, YouTube, there's a ton of great stuff on YouTube. Again, it's the magic search criteria that will get you yes. something worth watching, right? Because there's lots of junk on YouTube as well that you have to filter through, so. Are there any go-to sites that you might suggest uh, someone go to for inspiration like that? Or topics maybe that they could look under if they did a search on YouTube? On YouTube, I don't know particular, but when mm. I get creatively stuck, sometimes I go to Bork Panda. Oh, okay. And see the different art projects and the constraints that people have put on themselves. Mm. Like, uh, like the whole thing where you put an inanimate object on a piece of paper and a, light it weird and then you make an image using the shadow of that object uh, like lots of like Christoph Neiman type mm -hmm. and I would listen I would listen to Christoph Neiman I don't know okay. if I'm saying his name yeah I think that's right um, but I love hearing him talk about design and art we'll find a link to uh, some videos with him put that in the show notes as well Safia so one thing is uh, like have this craftsman mindset mm. And I think I heard it from uh, like Professor Carl Newport from his book uh, mm -hmm. Deep Work. Like he talks about like uh, I mean he I think he narrates a story about this craftsman like I think a sculptor uh, who produces this beautiful art and he gets so much satisfaction out of that art form like like creating you know something valuable that he has created with his own bare hand. So he cooked it up literally out of nothing. So so it's it's really nice to have that craftsman mindset. It could be for anybody even for a writer. Or, or 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 a manager or a leader like or a coach like that is your craft like how can you polish it refine it so there is no excellent like level of excellence you can achieve you can always get better so yeah. so that is a great mindset to have you can you're always pushing the uh, craft as well as yourself so that is one thing and uh, the, the sort of a problem i, I I'm, I'm still facing that problem the problem is that like what craft to choose <laughs> that is always uh, like a problem that happens and unfortunately in today's world we we are we are flooded with choices <laughs> and like you can learn a skill in a, in like 10 days or 20 hours like or one hour <laughs> people claim that you can do that and um, that is where i like this good fan versus great fan mindset so what is that piece of art or craft that you're great fan of that you want to create it for yourself so that is the craft that you want to pursue you can you can you can like biryani and still not cook it so that is okay yeah. but if you want to cook it as well then that is your niche or or your 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 passion or etc etc i think that is a that is a tip like people find it really hard to find their um niche right like and this is this i found as a filter for example i'm reading a book uh, by Scott, Scott McCloud, you would know him. Like he, he wrote this beautiful book, Comics. Land, yeah. Understanding Comics and Making Comics. Such a brilliant book. Uh, uh, last week, a friend of mine recommended it. It's brilliant that I didn't know that you can actually present non-fiction material through uh, simple comics. It's brilliant. I, I started reading like 50 pages in one shot. Like never have I read <laughs> <laughs> like 50 pages in one shot, and it's it's really nice. It's. Uh, like it's not visually appealing but but the 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 way it was presented is so appealing i i like it i'm a good fan but i'm not a great fan of that mm. like i would not be creating comics anytime in the future maybe i'll experiment it but i'll not create it but i love jack butcher's uh, 
ആർട്ട് ഐ ലവ് കാൾ റിച്ചർഡ്സ് ലൈക് സിമ്പിൾ വിഷ്വൽസ് മിനിമലിസ്റ്റിക് വിഷ്വൽസ് ദ ദേ ക്രിയേറ്റ് ഇൻ ഫാക്ട് ദാറ്റ് ദാറ്റ് ബ്രിങ്സ് മീ ടു മൈ നെക്സ്റ്റ് സ്റ്റെപ്പ് ലൈക് ഹൗ ഡു ഐ മാസ്റ്റർ ദാറ്റ് പർട്ടിക്കുലർ പീസ് ഓഫ് ക്രാഫ്റ്റ് ആൻഡ് ദ വേ ദാറ്റ് ഐ ഡിഡ് വാസ് ബേസിക്കലി കോപ്പിംഗ് ദ literally blatantly copying them and uh, i found validation in another place i think in copywriting it's called copy work right like like copywriters used to copy like manually copy yeah. uh, like the books or the novels or sales letter or sales pages and i also found it in another book called decoding greatness there's a guy by this guy called ron friedman he talks about the first step to mastering a craft is actually copying like and that is what exactly i did I, i was doing it very intuitively so i even had my canvas black just like jack butcher had and i was trying to do the same visuals in my thing i think it i mean i can't claim it but i think it it takes you inside the brain of the particular designer when you are trying to create it in some form or the other then what happens is that after that that is like on my practice ground my training ground then i go back and create my own uh art form in my style because in this process of imitation you will definitely not be perfect you will add your own masala to it <laughs> yeah, i mean exactly. i'm sticking to this sticking to that biryani <laughs> analog <laughs> like spices to it you will add a little extra pinch of salt or an extra um, uh, amount of chili or pepper or what not and uh, what happens is that you cook, cook, cook your own recipe uh, right. make your own recipe and make your own biryani in your own style and that is what happened to me also from jack butcher to my own own uh, style so that is one brilliant way of like actually is and even if now i want to learn anything i try to follow that method copy their form copy their art then finally try to create it on your own take that as an inspiration and do that then um, the third thing um, i think it's also still missing so um, i don't want to be this starving artist that is something unfortunately it stops many people many people to take up a career in creativity uh, but the problem is that in fact creativity can actually give you money as well and uh, the one of the thing that has happened is that social media has become this huge platform at least for me and there is this concept of building in public i think a lot of people has spoken loudly and enough about it you just have to talk about your processes then you use twitter or linkedin as your networking and you not be too salesy and spammy uh, i think I, i'll tell that caveat as well but on the other hand you can actually present your material you can build your portfolio you can build your digital asset and present it to people and actually invite them to invite you uh, to offer your service and that is how i started getting clients and now i i don't actually search for clients it's all coming as inbound a friend connects to another friend another brand and they come and approach me and we do a project together and that is how it is it is actually happening so these are the three basic like craftsman mindset and the second is this uh, uh, good versus uh, good fan versus great fan maybe we can say the third one is copying first imitating first then actually then mastering the craft and fourth would be this build in public uh, mm. process where you actually make money out of your creativity process Yeah, mm. that's that's my tips. I think it has become four tips. Hope that's okay. That's okay. Yeah, <laughs> we only have we only have three as a minimum. We've had many people who've done four or maybe five. So it's it's always better to have more tips. But we want to try and at least have three. And you've covered yourself. <laughs> great, 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 great. Now, nice. now, you know now you're making me hungry for biryani. I think. I'm, <laughs> I yeah, 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 yeah. And, and I think I've heard biryani is quite a quite a complex dish to make properly. It's not something you just whip it up in half an hour and it takes days, right? So um so probably Correct. a really good a good uh metaphor for creativity, right? Because things take time just like biryani does. So <laughs> Exactly, right? exactly. Yeah, <laughs> if you want yeah, a, yeah. if you want good biryani, yeah. So yeah, true, true. But it's always an experiment. You'll, yes. you'll definitely get the recipe wrong the first time. <laughs> it is bound to happen. And like that is what building public is, right? Like you can fail yeah. faster and quickly and so that you arrive at that level of refinement as as best as uh, possible so that gotcha. is uh, yeah <laughs> good deal the sketch note army podcast was created by me mike rody and brought to you by ro design studios it's produced and edited by alec polianis of amp creative studios the theme music was created by john sheetemeyer To support the creation of this show, I invite you to buy one of my books, The Sketchnote Handbook or The Sketchnote Workbook. You can find the books on Amazon or 
go to peachpit.com and use the code RODI40 for 40% off. Please share this podcast with other visual thinking friends and be sure to leave a nice rating on iTunes or your favorite podcast listening app so others can find the show.